Elizabeth and Wyatt could not have picked a more beautiful or appropriate setting to celebrate their love today. When Elizabeth met Wyatt, I read between the lines within the silence into the tone of her voice and knew immediately that they were going to be something great. I remember when Elizabeth called me before their first date. She was nervous yet excited to see this friend of a friend from PA school. I remember when she called me back with the update, the excitement in her voice, I knew she had a crush. Big time. I remember how a few weeks later, she told me how he held her hand when they walked down the sidewalk and how special he made her feel. And I remember when my phone rang in December of 2018, I looked down at my phone, I saw that she was calling and I, I just knew that Wyatt had made the best possible choice he ever could have made and that he asked my best friend to marry him. I'd like to congratulate you for uh, your, what feels like maybe your third wedding or yeah. marriage or something. No. Uh, second, second. <laughs> Second wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wanted to say, send our love and thanks for inviting us. Thank you. <laughs> and you're going to have the most wonderful marriage. We wish you all the best. We love you so much. Elizabeth, I take you as my partner through all times, good, bad, and uncertain. I promise to always put you, our love, our marriage, and our relationship above all else. I promise to be your partner in curiosity and to grow and evolve with you. I promise to challenge you and to accept challenges from you. I promise to be your partner in life, love, and adventure. I love you today, tomorrow, and, and always. always.
Welcome. <laughs> We're finally here, huh? So, I guess three times is the charm. We got, we got a perfect... Like this? Okay. So, we got a perfect day for the perfect couple. Jody and I are so thankful for all of you who have come here today for this wonderful celebration of Elizabeth and Wyatt's Day of Days, part two. Elizabeth, you look stunningly beautiful, as usual. And Wyatt, I guess this is the official welcome, although we've considered you a part of the family for years now, and we are truly, truly blessed to have you. Mary and Steve, thank you so much for the, for the, for the great welcome party. The pizza was super and almost as good as Elizabeth and Wyatt's. <laughs> Stina, as always, thank you. Your help was invaluable. And thanks to Ben and the others that helped make this day so very, very special. Erica, I'm not sure where you're sitting, but thank you for the, thank you for the beautiful, beautiful ceremony and the words of wisdom. <laughs> so, I could speak for at least a couple hours, but I've been given a time limit. So, <laughs> I'll make this as quick as possible. Um, let's just back up a bit to October 6, 1991, because it was only moments after, shall we say, quite an eventful trip to the hospital. When beautifully, she doesn't remember it. Yeah, I, I remember it. <laughs> because it was only moments after we arrived that a miracle was born. She smiled, looked up to me, and nothing has changed nearly 31 years later. She stole my heart away, and she still has it. Um, Elizabeth, I am so incredibly proud of you for all of your accomplishments and achievements, and it was just bursting with pride at the Colby and Pacific graduations. There are so many timeless memories and events that we've had in our lives, but it's impossible to capture them in just five or six minutes. So these are a few that are special to me. So, the three of us are sitting around the kitchen island, Elizabeth attached by her booster seat with a sippy cup, goldfish, and a slew of books in front of her, which was usual. So I decided to have a chat with her. And after a minute or so, I realized she's not even looking at me. So I say, are you listening to me? And she says, yes, daddy, in that sweet little voice of hers. So I say, what did I just say? And she repeats back to me word for word exactly what I just said. Jody bolts into the, into the other room, roaring away in laughter, so I'm there like, oh boy. That's when we knew you were something special. There's the time Elizabeth did something quite remarkable. I can't remember exactly what. And Papa, her grandfather, says, why, you little shit. And, El <laughs> and Elizabeth says, I big shit, Steen a little shit. <laughs> and even, there's an even better one about the garage story, but if I tell that one, I know they'll turn the mic off. Um, all I got to say is, she didn't get that from me, so it must have been Jody. Our first time skiing was at Neshoba Valley, rope toe and all, and I could tell right away she was a natural. This was the start to skiing almost every weekend, and out of one of those trips came one of the classic Elizabeth lines. It was pouring out, so I said, do we want to ski or do a movie instead? Without blinking, Elizabeth says, I didn't drive three hours to go see a movie. So that was that. Another time when she was only 11 years old and already an incredibly excellent skier, she went off this huge jump and her binding released. I mean, there was a big crash. A Lindsay Vaughn type crash. She actually shattered her goggles, which I saved, because I've never seen anyone shatter goggles before. And Stina looks up to me and she says, it's a good thing mom isn't here. And I said, yeah, it's a good thing for me. You know, it didn't matter whether we were running, biking, hiking, or skiing. She was always asking, Daddy, am I as good as you? It's a wonderful, wonderful feeling when your child passes you and everything you set out to teach them. Elizabeth, when I reminisce, it takes a lot of effort not to get stuck in memory lane. And I say this with a heart full of so many emotions, that it has been such a wonderful privilege and honor to be your dad and watch you grow into the woman you've become. 
You are beautiful inside and out, and we are so blessed and so thankful for all the heartfelt, joyous memories, and especially for being blessed with you. There are some who say you can't be a parent and a best friend too, but we surely disagree with that. Thanks for making it easy to be mom and dad. You know, there's a lot of change in life, but one thing that will never ever change is you will always be my little girl, and we will always have this special bond I so cherish. Wyatt, when we first met, I knew it was just a matter of time. Welcome again to our family and Book of Dreams. In the last several years, you've become more of a son to me than a son-in-law, and I wholeheartedly mean that. Congratulations again on all of your accomplishments and achievements, especially the MBA. Incredible, incredible milestone. I thoroughly so enjoy spending time together, especially with ski trips, and I look forward to many, many more. You know, Wyatt's become a fact checker. Instead of asking Alexa, we ask Wyatt. <laughs> all kidding aside, all kidding aside, you are very special. After all, you did pass the Jody test. <laughs> you and Elizabeth are the halves that make the other whole. I read a long time ago, there is no heaven here on earth, but there are pieces of it. And that is so true today. As I said before, you two are the perfect fit. Marriage is a journey, sometimes a mystery. And if I can offer one piece of advice, it would be, to always, always stay connected, always make time for and be a comfort to each other, for the rest of the world can surely wait. Never forget, you are a rainbow in our lives. Your dreams are our dreams. Your happiness is our happiness. Family is where life begins and love never ends. And these are the days that will last forever, days just like this. Thank you. Thank you so much. We love you so very much. And whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Rick. Hey, one more time. Can we give Rick a hand? So now we're going to be hearing from the best man, Jared Johnson. All right. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Jared, and I've known Wyatt since college. Wyatt asked me to be his best man two years ago, so I've had a lot of time to think about this speech. That's why I wrote it a couple days ago. So to start off, I just want to say, Elizabeth, you look so beautiful tonight. Wyatt, you did the best you could. <laughs> in all honesty, you do clean up good. So Wyatt and I met in the dorms in college. I heard a guitar playing somewhere in our wing, and I walked around until I found Wyatt playing his guitar. And I said, what's up, dude? You play guitar? He said, yeah. Do you play guitar? I said, yeah, let's jam. I found out I didn't know how to play guitar. <laughs> Wyatt really knows how to play guitar. I only know a couple chords. But from then on, Wyatt and I became fast friends. One thing I quickly learned about Wyatt was that he's very trusting. I used this to my advantage one weekend when Wyatt was heading out of town. Somehow I convinced him to give me his dorm key in case I really needed to get into his room for something when he was gone. Really, I just wanted to prank his roommate. So I got our whole wing to fill his room with several hundred balloons from floor to ceiling. And his roommate, who's returning from a 48-hour team building exercise, which was like a land navigation thing where you're up for 48 hours straight, came back and had to pop every single balloon in order to get into bed. <laughs> when Wyatt got back, he faced the wrath of his roommate, and he was reprimanded for giving me his key and was tasked with creating a key policy poster, <laughs> which he asked me to help with, and I said, no way, dude. This is your fault. <laughs> and it immediately was redecorated with the help of many of the Portland pilots here with a bunch of dicks. 
the moral of the story is, when you ask Wyatt for something, he will be there for you no matter what. No questions asked. And that's what you want in a friend. And I'm really grateful for your friendship, Wyatt. So as our relationship grew, we discovered that we liked opposites. Wyatt was really into craft brews. I was happy with Coors Light. I've been a lifelong Sounders fan. Wyatt's favorite tagline was, go sports. <laughs> so you can imagine my surprise when he started wearing a Timbers jersey just to piss me off <laughs> and let me, knew, let me know he bought season tickets. For those of you who don't, who don't live here, the Sounders and Timbers are MLS rivals. And I think Wyatt was just trying to help fill the void um, that, Patri that Elizabeth was feeling, being a Patriot fan living in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Another thing I enjoy about our friendship is we like to debate and argue about basically everything. And during those debates, we'll bring up random facts that we think are true, and usually they're not. <laughs> and this is important because it brings me to one of my first memories of Elizabeth. We all met for breakfast at Cadillac Cafe in Portland, and we were debating something. What it, what it was doesn't really matter. All I remember is why it made some comment, and before I could start to rebut, Elizabeth immediately called him out. And it kind of caught us both off guard. <laughs> He was just sitting there with de like a deer in the headlights. His mouth was wide open, wondering what his next move should be. <laughs> with me, he'd argue his way out of it, but with his new girlfriend, who he's clearly into, he sort of just had to admit defeat right in front of me. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. <laughs> and that's what I really admire about you, Elizabeth. You're never afraid to uh, be yourself and say what you're thinking. You challenge each other to bring the best out of each other, and that genuine honesty and humility between you two is why you're perfect together and will do wonders for your marriage. So here's to both of you. A lot of people go through life trying to find someone they, can't, they can stand to be around, but you two are lucky because you've found someone you can't stand to live without. Aww. Cheers. All right, one more time for Jared. Thanks, that was, that was so great. So we have one more toast this evening. It's from the maid of honor, Emily Berry. Give it up for Emily, you guys. <laughs> All right, those are two tough acts to follow. <laughs> Move a sound. Can you hear me better? I can be quiet. OK. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Emily, um, and it's my absolute honor and pleasure to be given just a few minutes to share with you a little bit about one of the most special people in the entire world. I'm going to try really hard not to cry through this whole thing, but I'm really honored to be here to celebrate her and why it's love. So neither Elizabeth nor I really remember when we met. It's not because that event was unremarkable but because the year was 1997 and we were five and we were just about to start first grade. So according to our mothers, the story goes that we met on the playground at Oak Meadow Montessori School in Littleton, Massachusetts. Um, and while I don't really have a clear memory of this meeting, it certainly changed the trajectory of my life because it was the start of one of the most special friendships I could have ever imagined. So growing up, Elizabeth was timid yet confident she loved to learn and she constantly had her nose in a book. Together we would spend hours after school watching Full House. I would braid her waist-long hair and see these ridiculous cornrows. And really, it was ridiculous. And we, <laughs> and we would have sleepovers complete with a breakfast of chocolate-covered donuts, which Jody would never let us have today. Um, one of my earliest memories of Elizabeth and I was celebrating her first communion in second grade. Because my family is Jewish, this was really the first time I've ever experienced such an event. But <laughs> it, wa it was. <laughs> Elizabeth looked so beautiful in her white puffy dress and her family who's here with us today. They just look so proud of her. And so I remember being a little bit nervous to meet all of them, but they welcomed me with open arms. And I know on that day, I really became part of her family. And that is a feeling that has remained so strongly until this day. Elizabeth and Wyatt could not have picked a more beautiful or appropriate setting to celebrate their love today. The mountains have always held a special place in Elizabeth's heart and skiing has always brought out the best parts of her. In middle school, Elizabeth and I skied at Sunday River in Maine with Rick and Christina. Um, and despite being a very skilled skier, Elizabeth patiently went down all the intermediate runs with me when she clearly would have preferred to fly down the Black Diamonds, which she was very qualified to do and did beautifully every time. 
In high school, she convinced me to join the cross-country ski team, of which she was a tumble star athlete, one of the best in the state, and the team captain. Elizabeth flexed her determination, leadership, humility, competitiveness, and strength on the ski course. She really was a beast, yet she was always at the finish line to cheer me on when I finished way, way, way after her. <laughs> That's just the kind of friend she is, the one who genuinely celebrates the accomplishments of others without comparison, which is great for all of us because Elizabeth is the best. She's one of the most athletic, intellectually curious, thoughtful, and hardworking people I know. She's someone who deserves to be so wildly celebrated herself. When Elizabeth moved across the country to greatly improve our medical system as a physician assistant, our friendship changed but deepened despite the distance. The hours of hanging out together turned into hours of phone calls, less frequent but meaningful, genuine, and often thought-provoking nonetheless. Through this distance, I've also become quite proficient at reading the silence between her text messages because uh, those who chat with Elizabeth often will know that texting is uh, not her strong suit. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Even so, whether we're actively communicating or just living our lives, Elizabeth and I certainly are chosen family, and that's a bond that just can't be broken. So it should come to no one's surprise that when Elizabeth met Wyatt, I read between the lines within the silence into the tone of her voice and knew immediately that they were going to be something great. I remember when Elizabeth called me before their first date. She was nervous yet excited to see this friend of a friend from PA school. I remember when she called me back with the update, the excitement in her voice, I knew she had a crush, <laughs> big time. I remember how a few weeks later she told me how he held her hand when they walked down the sidewalk and how, how special he made her feel. And I remember when my phone rang in December of 2018, I looked down at my phone, I saw that she was calling and I, j I just knew that Wyatt had made the best possible choice he ever could have made and that he asked my best friend to marry him. Now those who know Wyatt well know that he is the perfect complement to my girl Elizabeth. He too has a love of learning, a sense of adventure and a deep care for those around him. They know that he can be a little nervous at times, but he carefully thinks through each of his decisions. And they should also know that they better brush up on their beer vocabulary because one order of a ghost will quickly have Wyatt informing you that is in fact pronounced go say. You only mistake, make that mistake one, one time. <laughs> so over the years, Wyatt has become part of my family too. And I'm pretty sure I told him as such the first time I met him, but luckily that didn't scare him off. <laughs> Wyatt is beautifully matched to Elizabeth. They share a passion for home cooking, a desire to spend a weekend immersed in nature, and strong relationship values of teamwork, equity, and communication. But also, the more I get to know Wyatt, the more familiar his personality becomes until it clicked for me last summer that Wyatt and I are pretty darn similar <laughs> and that Elizabeth may have married a version of me. <laughs> Hmm, it makes complete sense to me. I mean, come on. And while I joke, I am immensely comforted and confident that Elizabeth and Wyatt will persevere through the tough times. They'll celebrate the good ones. They'll be a team through whatever life throws at them and continue to hold each other's hand throughout a lifetime of adventures. So I had the pleasure of seeing Elizabeth in a beautiful white dress at her first communion 23 years ago, and it brings me an indescribable amount of joy to be standing here today looking at her in this gorgeous white dress on her wedding day. My wish for every person is they have a friend like Elizabeth, though I'm keenly aware of how rare our friendship is. Of all the things for which I am grateful, my best friendship with you, Elizabeth, is certainly near the top of that list, and really, best friends doesn't even start to cover it. And to Wyatt, I know you know firsthand how special she is. I wish you both a lifetime of teamwork, laughs, fabulous meals, awe-inspiring adventures, of course, holding hands through it all. So I invite you all to raise your glass and to celebrate our bride and groom. To Elizabeth and Wyatt, may you always recognize how special you are individually and even more so together. To a lifetime of happiness, I love you both very much. Cheers. <laughs>